Hey everybody, so I've got this harness right here. This is from the Eaton Locker. Um, to do a proper review, I gotta actually wire up the locker. So I'll try to do a small DIY on how do I ran the wiring over to the front and then to the cabin. And that way anybody that gets the Eaton Locker will be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, have a simple process to follow as well. All right, so this part right here plugs into the actual locker itself, um, the housing of the rear axle, the differential. And then you follow it all the way to the front. So the very first thing that I would recommend that you do is to actually snake the uh, differential plug down through here, through the front of the engine, just because as you can see, these pieces right here are rather bulky. That right here. So it's gonna be a lot more work to snake this up into the engine bay than it is to snake the single plug down so I would recommend starting there. Um, excuse the dirty engine bay. I know in the past I've had comments about how dirty it is. Well, don't mind that, okay? Okay, so I ran this wire down. So now I only have this much cable left and uh, it should be more than enough to get my ground wire, which is right over here, hooked up to this fuse box, got my power to the fuse box as well, and then a wire to run into the uh, cabin through an access panel or an access hole. And uh, if you look down beneath the truck, got all my wiring pulled down and sitting right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it to the back. Okay, so we're back again and uh, you can see I've got it hooked up. I've got it tied off right here. One thing I didn't do the first time was to run it above this box right here. I'm not sure what it's called, ABS or something. ADD control, who knows? But then run it through the top. That way it's not hanging over here. So you can see it's right there behind. Comes down, hooks up right here. Got enough slack, a little bit more than what the brake lines offer just in case. Uh, then I tied it off right over here to the uh, e-brake line, right there again, went over the uh, leaf springs, you can kind of see them, and then right there you go, right above the leaf springs, tied it off again, and again, then went behind it, followed it, right here again, then went here, another one, went over the frame, And now we're on the inside of the frame. You can see I tied it off here again. This right here was an oversight the first time I ran some wires. So I just kind of uh, hacked that instead of uh, running the wire over again because it was kind of a pain in the ass. But in this case, I had the forethought to run it appropriately the first time. So you can see it's right there. And then just follow that, that's the wire right here. Then once we get over here, you're behind the pipes for the exhaust and the catalytic converter. So I started running it behind this uh, heat shield to kind of protect the wiring. You may want to do the same. So here it is again, cross, cross frame. Here it is a couple more. And then over here, you can see that it's tucked above the heat shield for this one, for this heat shield, the one that I'm, well, hang on, right above this heat shield. Oh, and uh, just a service announcement, this heat shield is sharp. So when you're putting your fingers in here, you wanna be careful not to cut yourself against this. It is sharp. And then once again, you continue right through here. And then I tied it off one more time behind this heat shield. i cross over to this side. And then you can see I tied these wires together where I previously already had something tied to it. And then that's it. So basically from the underside of the car, you're pretty much done, you're covered. So that's it for the bottom of the car. This uh, signal wire, you're gonna go ahead and uh, connect your switch this wire right here goes to this um breaker 
and here's the lead for that one. Now, because I run my own breaker box and uh, fuse relay box, I'm actually gonna go ahead and plug into this one directly over here, over here with a 15 amp fuse. And that'll bypass this because that's basically what this is, a 15 amp uh, breaker as well. So if it trips, it'll blow a fuse over here. That way I can minimize the clutter that I'm running over under my engine bay. Um, hopefully I'm not giving you guys bad advice. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then go ahead and run it to this. And then you can run into your battery directly or you can plug into this, whatever you have in your configuration. I'm gonna choose to run it directly over here. Uh, same with my ground that's back over here. Uh, this ground right over here, same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to my grounds. And uh, I'll show you guys when that's done. Okay, so I've got the wires put in now. This is the ground wire and the 12 volt wire. As you can see here, it's got its own connection. I need to put a 15 amp fuse here to match the breaker that came with it. And then I've got it grounded over here already on an open slot, but it wasn't an open slot. All right, guys, so next order of business is running the wiring for the actual locker switch. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this position here because I already have my air beacon bristler on this one. So I'm gonna run the wires and I'm gonna pass it through the firewall. Um, right here. Right there where that main harness loom goes through. So there's a little, little nub right here that you can clip the cap off of it. And that's how I pass the wire through. So then just snake your cables behind the console, the dash, to wherever it is that you're gonna run the switch to. So I have it right here, and I'll plug it into this open slot. And uh, next is you have to connect your ground to the chassis and to your ignition. And this is to the signal under the hood. Okay, so I've got all the wires sucked up. I've got the ground going right here to these. I've got the uh, signal wire going under the engine and the 12 volt ignition wire, the blue one. That's hooked up right here. You can see it with a little jumper. But I didn't have to actually hook up to that jumper because I plugged in right here, which was not in use. The very first one here on the bottom right. Your truck, depending on the features, may be different. But if you look up another one that's crossed out, here's the three of them, four of them. You'll find what you need. And they have ignition power. So as you can see here, the ignition's off, nothing happens. Let's open the switch. Ignition on, and now I have power, see? And now we gotta tidy up. So quick tip, um, when I was messing around with this plug, it has this uh, pigtail. But this pigtail, all it is is just a little plastic to keep all the connectors in place. It has no other function. So I went ahead and uh, just removed the cables. That way I can go ahead and sneak them a lot easier, sort them out. And also because it would save up a ton of space in the back. So it's like a good inch or more of space behind it if I remove it. So all the excess loom is right there that's it right here and there was a little pocket that was empty I'm gonna use that for the kick panel to cover it up and then just a little single wire going right back there and then the connector right in there and that's it gonna start putting the panels back on all right so i've got this all wired up now you can see here there's the switch for the locker. Wires are tucked up out of the way. Then if we go over here to the 
engine bay. Got everything wired up over here as well. Got the 15 amp blue right here. That's for the 12 volt. Got the uh, relay or the switch right here for the signal as well. Got the ground. And then that all goes to the back over here. So that's all set up and ready to be used. So we'll go test it out.